Oh, see, oh, sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters. Oh, happy Thanksgiving Day. Or happy Thanksgiving season, as the case may be. Uh, this is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And it is also the Sunday before Jolly Day, which uh, I have spoken of earlier in other times. But uh, today I wanted to... Uh, include that a little bit in, in what I'm talking about. And so as we seek to gain understanding today about what it means to have clear mind and clear vision, let's, uh, let's turn to our Hebrew Bibles. Our reading today from the Hebrew Bible is going to be 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 12 through 25. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 12 through 25. Okay, this is a little bit of a long-winded kind of reading today, so just giving you a heads up. Now the sons of Eli were scoundrels. They had no regard for God or for the duties of the priests of the people. When anyone offered sacrifice, the priest's servant would come while the meat was boiling, with the three-pronged fork in his hand, and he would thrust it into the pan, or the kettle, or the cauldron, or pot. All that the fork brought up, the priest would take for himself. This is what they did at Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Moreover, before the fat was burned, the priest's servant would come and say, to the one who was sacrificed. Give meat for the priest to roast. For he will not accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. And if the man said to him, Let them burn the fat first, and then take whatever you wish, he would say, No, you must give it now. If not, I will take it by force. Thus the sins, the sin of the young men, was very great in the sight of God, for they treated the offerings uh, to God with contempt. Samuel was ministering before God, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May God repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to God. And then they would return to their home. And God took note of Hannah. She conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of God. Now Eli was very old. He had heard all that his sons were doing to all Israel. And how they lay with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all these people. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear the people of God spreading abroad. If one person sins against another, someone can intercede for the sinner with God. But who, but if someone sins against God, who can make intercession? But they would not listen to the voice of their father, for it was the will of God killed him. All right, now let's move over to our, uh, our New Testament reading today, which is going to be Luke chapter 6, 39 through 49, and this is, this is a parable. He, meaning Jesus, also told them a parable 
Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like the teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good, and the evil person out of the evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. Why do you call me? Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you. I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building a house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, immediately it fell, and great was the ruin of that house. Clear mind and clear vision is about being able to see truth. To be able to see the truth about ourselves and see the truth about others. Now, uh, when we, uh, in our Indian religious tradition, we attribute this to Hawk medicine, at least in the way that I understand things. Hawk medicine is about clear mind and clear vision, being able to see through the deceptions, being able to see through the double standards, the incongruities, and being able to see truth. And the readings that we have today basically are about uh, paying attention to the signs. And, and well, the signs can be, can be many and come in many ways and many forms. But mostly, uh, they come from actions, from deeds. You know, the old phrase, words are cheap. Actions speak truth. And so, when we go back to Samuel, we have to understand where Samuel's coming from here. Okay, in, in the first book of Samuel, Eli is the prophet of God. He's like the head honcho, and he's, he's getting up there in years, and he had... Met, uh, several sons and they became priests but unlike their dad they uh, they were taking God for granted you know I guess you could say it's been a while since God had done anything one on one in these people's reality and so they were like well you know maybe this is all just putting on the show maybe this is just doing because it's something to do, we don't know, you know, it's iron control thing. So, uh, they didn't take it seriously. They weren't paying attention to the importance of honoring the sacred, sacredness of ceremony, the sacredness of God, and while I may not necessarily agree with everything that was going on in here, and, you know, Esau eliminated the sacrifice, but uh, and even the Judaic people today, uh, no, as far as I know, they don't do sacrifices anymore. Uh, but uh, we see here Eli, uh, his son, they were scoundrels. They were hurting people. They were taking advantage of people. They were breaking the law. Not, you know, law and order back in the day was a big deal for them. 
It wasn't about doing what was right, it was about obeying the law. And of course, when you're dealing with people who are trying, you know, God was trying to get them to grow and evolve as spiritual beings and human beings in a good way. And the best way to do that is to teach people emotional and spiritual maturity, guide them in that direction. And these guys, they didn't get it. They were basically looking out for their own self-interest. They were using God to get what they wanted for their own personal gain. Sound familiar? Yeah. So, here we have sons of Eli really screwing up. And in the middle of all this, we have Samuel when he was a boy. And the backstory is, you know, Samuel, uh, Hannah was having a really hard time bearing children, and so she had gone and prayed for Eli to bless her, and, and she had just, you know, or she was praying to God, and Eli had overheard her and blessed her, and, and uh, she just wanted to have a son. And so God helped her out, and uh, she had promised to give her, uh, give her firstborn to, to God, to be of service to God. And so when he was born, he was, he was of the age, he was turned over to Samuel, or to Eli, I mean. Samuel was turned over to Eli, and Samuel was raised in the temple as a servant of God, or the tent at the time here. Uh, so, with that backstory in mind, we have a situation here where Samuel's a young boy, and he's doing what's right. And his mom's helping out. She's making him a robe every year. And and this is important because, you know, one of the, one of the indications here is, is that this is considered a gift to God and not to her son because it's helping him serve God. So from that, you know, Eli is coming to this place where he challenges his sons. And he says to them, I, I see the signs. I hear the I'm paying attention. I'm, I'm hearing what the people are saying. Everything is there. You're doing what's wrong. You're hurting people. And you're doing it in the name of God. Knock it off. And they ignore him. And, and here it says because God had decided, you know, they wouldn't listen because God decided to go ahead and kill them. But maybe there's a little bit more to that if we get into the investigation a little bit. You know? Uh, we've heard a lot about what's going, what goes around comes around and what that's about as we look at the reading here in this parable you know uh, where Jesus is talking about what, what a good heart produces good works and a bad heart produces bad works so it doesn't you know where people are coming from is the energy they're putting out. Their actions are telling you the motives behind their heart, behind their deeds, what they're really looking at. And so when we think about paying attention to the signs and having clear mind and clear vision, we're looking at what's really going on. What's going on underneath all the rhetoric what's going on behind the scenes here and what we see here in this situation is these people were putting out a vibe that was setting themselves up for their own destruction did God really want to wipe these people out? Well, of course not God has no interest in destroying human beings who are doing their thing God has given us free will we create our reality and through clear mind and clear vision, we are able to have that focus and to choose the direction we want to go. God empowers us to do that. And what we put out is what we get back. Now, let's take Geronimo, for example. I don't know, everybody's heard the story of Geronimo, and there's lots of movies out there about it. But what's, what's significant here is that here was a person in the midst of conflict, his people were suffering, 
instead of thinking about only himself and doing what was easy for him, he decided to go out by himself on the cliff and come face to face with God. He wanted to get his head clear. He wanted to get right. So he knew what was the best thing for him to do to be of service to God and to the people, to get his heart right. And Spirit saw what he was doing and what his motives were. And so he was given a great gift. He was, he was given the, the ability to uh, be protected from harm, or from death anyway, in order to help his people. So basically, God was on his side. And God stood by him for his entire life, helping him out. And uh, so you have to think about, well, if God chose to side with Geronimo and protect him and help him save his people, then who is God protecting him from? Well, you know, obviously in this situation, God was protecting him from the conquerors who were coming in the name of God, in the name of Christ, and uh, doing harm. And Jesus talks about this. He says, okay, if you're not going to pay attention to what's going on, you're not really going to see the truth behind a person's motives. If you're only going to put yourself first, you're going to be this... Uh, Rogue, who is disdainful of the sacredness of God and the sacredness of life. If you're going to be like the sons of Eli and uh, say one thing, put on a good show, and then pretend to do something, and then do something else, well, then God is saying that you're like the person who's building your house on sand. You're setting yourself up for failure, for pain and suffering. You're making your life harder than it needs to be, and you're making the lives of your family members and your friends and your community harder than it should be. For example, I've been listening to NPR this week, driving back and forth to uh, uh, where I work, as I do, I'm bivocational just like a lot of other people. And, uh, you know, here lately, you know, with the election that just took place, there's a lot of talk about the immigration reform. And I have heard one interview after another of Republican congressmen, Republican senators, and I saw the TV interviews yesterday on the internet from uh, President Obama's speech about immigration reform and his executive action. And what I have heard repeatedly is uh, deception. People calling themselves believers, Christians, serving the community, being of service to God, saying on the one hand, they don't want a government shut down. They don't want to hurt the country. They don't want to hurt the people. But on the other hand, they're not passing the financing bill. They're not funding the government. And they're threatening to stop the president from doing his little thing to help out uh, these uh, immigrants who have been in the country for at least five years, just temporarily keeping them from being deported for the next few years, they're going to stop him. They're trying to, you know, talk about stopping him by shutting down the entire country. Because they won't take anything off the table that they can use 
to cause harm with, to get revenge. This is all about power and control. It always has been. It always will be. This was this last election was the lowest turn voting turnout since I think World War II is what they were saying on NPR. So many people are so disillusioned and dis, you know, it's basically fed up with our government that they don't even bother voting anymore. And unfortunately, the consequences of that is what we're dealing with today. So these people who chose not to show up and cast their vote have set themselves up to make their lives harder than they need to be. Do I blame the politicians? No. Politicians are greedy, self-serving, power-hungry people who care only about their own self-interest and not the people. When there are some exceptions. But, let's face it, when's the last time you saw a statesman representing the United States Congress? Well, not in my lifetime. I know one or two prior when I got old enough, but not in my lifetime. I've seen statesmen representing countries around the world, but not here in North America. Here in North America, it's been, since Nam, one congressional leader after another looking out for their own self-interest, with some exceptions to help improve the quality of life. And I have to ask myself, are these people who are being supported by believers, people who consider themselves to be the chosen people of God, are they really representing God's message in North America? And God's message is, hey, it's supposed to be taking care of the people. And the people include vulnerable populations who are threatened with tyranny and oppression and have nowhere else to go and no way to defend themselves and are seeking to live a peaceful life. Millions of illegal immigrants are in this country. And as uh, I saw on the internet yesterday, it was a post on the internet yesterday, a guy up in Chicago posted it. It was about, uh, you know, how all non-Indians here in North America, all non-American Indians, are immigrants and Thanksgiving, you know, they were helped out. American Indians helped out the immigrants when they first got here. Otherwise, they'd start death. They'd be dead and gone and never would happen. So, it's ironic today how many American people want to inconvenience themselves a little bit, especially the wealthy who don't want to put up any money to help out with a couple of exceptions. Uh, come from families who were bailed out when they first came to North America. It's ironic, don't you think? But it's all about what Jesus is saying here. It's all about what uh, Eli was saying back there at the, uh, in Samuel. And I happen to like Samuel. I think he's cool. This, this one dude, he did, some, he did some good stuff. And he was the last of the judges for the, for the Israelites in that respect. But uh, he was a prophet. So what Christ is saying here is, hey, pay attention to the signs. And think about your own self. How are you setting yourself up to make your life harder than it needs to be? And if you have pay attention to what Creator is calling you to do, to change your thoughts, change your feelings, change your behaviors, in order to be in harmony with God's purpose for creation, God's intention for creation, your life will be far easier for yourself and for the other people around you than you continue to make it.
Codependent behavior is about enabling harmful behavior, self-sabotaging behavior. And we do it to ourselves, we do it to others. And we do this through many examples, many examples. Are there people, there's no perfect person, let's, let's get that straight, there are no such thing as perfect person, but like Jesus says here, you know, it's kind of hard to do the blame game, pointing fingers at other people, talking about how bad they are, when yourself, you have your own stuff going on that you haven't cleaned up yet. And we set ourselves up by being unwilling to look at those things that we need to get help with. We make our lives harder in that way. And we are coming into Thanksgiving right now. This is a time of gratitude. This is a time of paying attention and grateful for God's blessings upon us. And Jali, Jali saw the truth. He had clear mind and clear vision about what was really going on back in 1832 when the Cherokee people in many nations were put in stockades. They were rounded up. The treaties were broken. Everything was taken away from the people so the settlers could have the gold and have the land. He saw the truth about what was really going on in the hearts and the minds of these so-called believers coming in the name of God. And he chose to take his family and go away and get out of the line of fire. <clears throat> and he rescued a lot of people because in that process he wound up having to sacrifice himself and his two oldest sons in order to protect the people that were left in the hills from being forced to leave their homes. And that's why we honor him the day after Thanksgiving is known as Jolly Day here in Indian Country. And we honor him for what he has done. And we remember. He had a clear mind, clear vision. He saw the truth behind the deeds. The words spoke loud. And so we come now remembering that love lifts people up. Love empowers people. God cares about me empowering us through loving us and wants us to pay attention to the signs. If things are getting harder for us instead of getting easier, then maybe we're not doing things according to our Creator's plan, according to our Creator's desire for us. We have to pay attention to these signs because making life harder for ourselves and for vulnerable peoples will certainly bring bad luck upon us and all others around us. It's not just us that's going to hurt, it's everybody. And so we have to remember that to walk, to truly walk in God's grace, we must pay attention to the signs and do what we have to do to do right by ourselves, by God, by our community, and by all of you. Walk in beauty. I hope.